So good morning once more and welcome. This morning we are going to begin with uh, the topic VLAN principles and configuration. So on the forward, Ethernet technology implements data communication over shared media based on carrier sense multiple access with collision detection. You still remember how CSMA CD works? You still remember how it works on a shared media in order to prevent or detect collisions? Yeah. So if there are a large number of PCs on the Ethernet, security risks and broadcast storms may occur. So two problems, security risks and broadcast storms. Deteriorating network performance and even causing network breakdowns. By the way, when the broadcast storm becomes too huge, your network simply breaks down. Your CPU resources for your switch, they're going to get overwhelmed and your switch is going to shut down. So that's what we call network breakdown. So a virtual local area network technology is therefore introduced, introduced to solve these problems. So this course describes villain principles, working principles of different layer two interfaces, villain applications, data forwarding principles, and basic VLAN configuration methods. So by the end of this chapter, you should be able to. Uh, Elaine, please help us with reading out the objectives. OK, Dennis. OK, objectives. On the complete completion of this course, you will be able to understand the background of the VLAN technology, mm -hmm. identify the, v the VLAN to which data belongs, mm -hmm. master different VLAN assignment modes, yes. describe how data communication is implemented through VLAN. Mm. Lastly, master basic VLAN configuration method. methods. Okay, so let's 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 have a look at this. We have different sections. What is a VLAN? That is what we're going to begin with, and then we look at VLAN principles. So issues issues with the traditional Ethernet. Issues with the traditional Ethernet. Problem is, on the traditional Ethernet, if we generate a unicast frame. If we generate a unicast frame, we want that frame to come to PC2. So PC1 wants to communicate with PC2. What happens if this switch, if this switch has the MAC address of, uh, uh, has the destination MAC address on it, then it knows that I'm supposed to forward it out through this interface alone. Are we together? If it has the MAC address of PC2 on its MAC address table, it's going to forward it out through that interface alone, right? So that's how switch one is going to process that frame. Is that correct? Okay. Then that frame gets to switch two. On the other hand, switch two checks uh, its MAC address table and finds out, hey, I don't have this. I don't have this MAC address. I don't have this MAC address in my MAC address table. So what does switch two do? It sends out this packet. It's what is known as the unknown, unknown unicast frame. It will send it out through all the other interfaces. Are we together? Through all the other interfaces, like that. Ah, yeah. Then switch three receives it. Switch three has the MAC address of PC two. So if it has the MAC address of PC2, then it's simply going to send that address, uh, that particular frame, just to PC2 alone. Are we together? But you see, because switch 2 here did not have the MAC address of PC2, then it's going to flood it. This is what we call flooding, right? It's going to flood it. So when it floods it, then all these other PCs that are connected to switch 5, because switch 5 also does not have the MAC address of PC2. So it's also going to flood it. So all these PCs are going to receive that frame. 
Are you seeing that that is a security risk? If they want to, they can process it. If someone fakes the MAC address of PC2, the destination MAC address. Uh, on the other hand, if this comes here, switch 7 has the MAC address of PC2, so it's, it simply knows that PC2 is not connected to any of my interface. So it's just going to discard it. Are we together? It's going to discard that frame. It's not going to forward it. So that is what this example, uh, this example is, uh, is showing us. As we know, switches create what we call a layer 2 broadcast domain. Meaning if they receive an unknown unicast frame or a broadcast frame, then they're going to broadcast it out through all the other interfaces other than the interface that has received that particular uh, that particular um, uh, 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 frame. Okay, so the larger the broadcast domain is, the more serious network security and what they're calling what? Junk traffic problems are. So that is the main problem with this. Yes, Kellen. Ah, ah, that's a very good question, by the way. How does switch 7, how does switch 7 know the MAC address of PC2? So, I, I didn't find this example so good because in this example, they show, for example, that switch 2 does not know the MAC address of PC2, right? I don't think it's a very good scenario. But anyway, it can still be explained how. As we know, you can either learn MAC addresses uh, 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 dynamically or it can be manually configured by the network administrator. Are you together? So in this particular example, we can just make the assumption that PC1, uh, switch 1 here and switch 7 maybe have been configured with the MAC address of PC2. Yeah, PC2. And as we know, if switch 7 knows the MAC address of PC2 and it knows that if I receive, uh, if, if, if this guy here sends me a frame that is supposed to go to PC2, then I'm supposed to send it out through this interface, right? So what happens? If switch 2 here sends a frame whose destination address is the MAC address of PC2 and this guy receives it on this interface, they're simply going to discard it. Are we together? When a switch receives a frame whose destination address is the same as the outgoing interface for that MAC address, then the switch simply discards that frame. Are you together? So you understand why now this switch is simply going to discard it. So the only way we can explain how switch 7 and switch 1 here learned about the MAC address of PC2, yet switch 2 does not know the MAC address of PC2, is maybe because they were configured manually by the network administrator. So let's make that uh, assumption in order for this example to to make sense. Yes, Leo. Yes, yes, exactly. So that's what we've just said. We make the assumption that switch one uh, switch 3 and switch 7 have the MAC address. Okay? While switch 2 and switch 5 do not have the MAC address, right? Yeah. Okay. So, let's look at um, let's look at the characteristics of a villain. Now, villain in full is virtual, local, area, network. Virtual local area network. Villain. Villain. Now, a villain is used to break up a huge broadcast domain into multiple broadcast domains. Into multiple uh, broadcast domains. Now, generally, as we've said, villains are some of the characteristics. They're geographically independent. Meaning, they logically divide a large broadcast domain into several small broadcast domains. Uh, uh, they do that. For, for example, in, in this particular example, uh, we, have, uh, 
we have these PCs, these two PCs, they have been added to a single logical group. A single logical group. While all the others, for example, or uh, let me just let me just use uh, let me use this one here. So we have these two PCs. They are on one group. Then we have this one on another group. So they are logical groups. They are they are not geographically dependent. Then we have these others that I have not highlighted, which are on a different group. So once we once we do that, if this guy sends a broadcast packet and switch two does not know uh, the destination MAC address on its MAC address table, then yes, it's going to uh, flood it. It's going to flood it. But any switch that is not connected to this VLAN is not going to forward it further. So you see, switch five is no longer going to broadcast it to these other PCs because they are not they are not on this logical group. Uh, 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 so that is what happens. For switch 7, of course, it will just discard it as we explained earlier. Uh, and then for this one, it's of course going to uh, forward it because it has the destination MAC address. Uh, that is the assumption that switch 3 has the destination MAC address. So it's just going to send it as a unicast frame there. So VLAN, VLANs, as we've said, uh, they're geographically independent, then only devices in the same VLAN can directly communicate at layer 2. So what that means is that if you're on the same group, you can be able to communicate. Like PC2 can be able to communicate with this one. But PC2 cannot be able to communicate with that one because they're on different VLANs. So they cannot communicate at layer if you want PCs from different VLANs to communicate, then you have to introduce a layer 3 device, as we are going to see in the next topic. Now, as we've correctly discussed earlier, some of the benefits, some of the benefits of VLANs, benefits of VLANs. So number one, it lowers junk traffic. Number two, uh, uh, smaller broadcast domains, smaller broadcast domains. Number three, um, improves network security. So normally I, I type for you some of these things so that you can be able to remember them better. Expect questions which we call multiple choice questions. So you're going to get a question that tells you to select the benefits of VLANs. Then they give you five options. And maybe three are correct. Maybe four are correct. Maybe all of them are correct. So you're supposed to check them. So the last bit in your certification exam, the last bit of questions that you're going to, to, to get, about 15 of them, they are going to be multiple choice. Normally, they are the most uh, uh, tricky. Not really difficult, but tricky. Because you, you have to... You really have to understand a concept for you to be able to uh, 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 to get it right. So those are just some of the benefits of VLANs. Okay. Then another benefit, of course, as we've said, is uh, that geographical independence. That is, it allows allows flexible setup of virtual groups. Groups. Groups, groups. So, okay, like that. Okay, so I hope you've captured that. So, let's look at the VLAN principles. How do, yes, Kellen. Uh -huh. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. It improves network robustness. Okay. So, okay, okay, okay. Uh, improves, improves network robust, robust, robustness. Uh, in networking, what, what, what do we mean when we say robust? 
Anyone? Uh -huh. uh. Yes, yes, yes. So robustness is uh, how huge, how complicated, I mean, not really complicated, but how huge ca can it grow? So you can think of robust as scalability. Eh? So because now we are able to subdivide the large broadcast domain into smaller manageable ones, then the network can be able to expand further and further. Are you getting the point? Yeah, so that is what uh, we mean when you talk of improving the network robustness. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just go go ahead. Yeah, read it. Read it out. Okay, let me just let me just check. Uh, oh, I have seen it. I have seen it. Improves network robustness. Faults in a VLAN do not affect PCs in other VLANs. Do not affect PCs in other VLANs. Faults on a VLAN do not affect PCs on other VLANs. Okay. So, okay. That makes sense. So let me just type that here. False on a VLAN. On a VLAN. Do not affect PCs in other VLAN. So that is very true. What that means is um, in case we have a problem, in case we have a problem with this particular VLAN, in case we have a problem with this particular VLAN, for example, we we accidentally disable this particular VLAN. Are we together? So only these PCs are going to be locked out of communication. Are you getting the point? So for example, this is VLAN 2. So if we disable this VLAN, then the, the other PCs are still going to be able to communicate with each other. PCs on VLAN 3, on VLAN 4, they're going to be able to uh, communicate with each other. And again, that helps in terms of uh, also scalability, so that we can be able to manage the smaller groups, as you said, uh, which makes the management of the network easier as it scales. So that's how I can explain that one. Thank you for pointing at th that out. Okay. So let's look at the... VLAN implementation, how do we implement VLANs? How do we implement VLANs? So in this particular example, we have the interfaces of switch 1 and the interfaces of switch 2. So switch 1 and switch 2 belong to the same enterprise. VLANs are planned for the network with VLAN ID for department A uh, and oh, with VLAN 10, sorry, VLAN 10 for Department A and VLAN 20 for Department B. So employees in Department A and B are connected to both Switch 1 and Switch 2, meaning that, for example, they're on different buildings or different floors. So on one floor, you have Switch 1. On another floor, you have Switch 2. But on both floors, you have employees from the from both departments, Department A and Department B. So how then do you, how do you do that? So assume that a frame sent from PC1 re reaches switch 2 through the link between switch 1 and switch 2, which is this one. So they have been interconnected here via port 5. Are you seeing that? Via port 5. So if no processing is implemented, switch 2 can either identify the VLAN uh, can neither, sorry, hey. switch 2 can neither identify the villain to which the frame belongs nor determine the villain to which the frame should be sent. It simply means, well, what you're trying to say here is that if we send a frame that is coming from villain 10, how will switch 2 be able to know that this frame is supposed to be forwarded to, to PCs on villain 10 only? 
Uh, so in this particular example, we are sending a, a, a frame from PC1. It's supposed to go to switch 2 and only be sent to PCs, uh, for example, that are on VLAN 10 to PC4, like that. So how will switch 2 be able to know that? So that is what we want to understand in the subsequent slides. Okay, so the answer to that question is that VLANs introduce introduce what we call the VLAN the VLAN tag VLAN tag the VLAN tag. So I triple E I triple E eight oh two dot one Q defines a four byte VLAN tag which we are going to see for Ethernet frames, enabling switches to identify the VLANs to which several frames belong to. Uh, so that is how it's able to identify that. So using that header. So VLANs were created by IEEE and the standard is IEEE 80, 802.1. One Q. So we are going to see that even in the lab. Okay. So the original Ethernet frame, the original Ethernet frame, will be referred to as going forward as what? Untagged frame, meaning it's a frame that does not have a VLAN tag. Are we together? Otherwise, after we add this header on an Ethernet frame, then we are going to be referring to that frame as a as a tagged frame. As a tagged frame. Now the VLAN the VLAN tag has uh, these fields. The VLAN tag has these fields. Uh, so first of all, sorry. The VLAN tag is added. Uh, the VLAN tag is added here. So on the Ethernet header, it is added just between the source MAC address field and the length or type field. Are we together? So you can see that a tagged frame has the tag here. So that's the first thing you're supposed to know. Then these are the fields. These are the fields of these are the fields of a VLAN VLAN tag. So it's four bytes. So if you add this and convert it into bytes, you're going to get four bytes. The first the first field is what we call the TPID. TPID is Tag Protocol Identifier. Tag Protocol Identifier. It's used to identify the type of frame. The type of frame. Normally, the value is this. We don't have any other type of VLAN tag. So the value is always going to be that value in hexadecimal, meaning it's an IEEE 802.1Q frame. Then the next one is the priority field. So what you're having there as a pri is the priority field. Priority. The priority field, as you might have guessed, is used for quality of service. So normally it will have a value between 0 to 7 to specify different priorities of that particular frame. Then we have, uh, we have what we call the canonical format. Canonical 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 format indicator canonical format indicator SCI it indicates whether a MAC address is in the canonical format so I want you to go and read write that as a reading assignment to read about the canonical format of a MAC address so normally we have a canonical format or non-canonical format normally for Ethernet frames for Ethernet frames uh, this field will always be zero, meaning that uh, we are sending the MAC address in canonical format. And when you read, you're going to understand that when we say canonical format, it simply means that we are sending bytes from the left to the right. Hello, teacher. Sorry. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I had actually asked you, I don't know if you are recording, because I noticed that uh, it's not blinking as usual, the way you normally write. Yes, yes. Uh, Michael has not made me host. So uh, I'm just recording via another app, but thank oh. you for the reminder. Thank you so much. Yes, yeah, so I'm recording.
So uh, as you're going, when you read about the canonical format, it means when you're using canonical format, you're sending the MAC address, every byte of the, can uh, of the MAC address from left to right. From left, so the first bit on the leftmost part, then the second one, like that. Otherwise, non-canonical format is the opposite, from right to left. Are we together? Just like when you are writing in English, we write from where to where? From left to right, right? Yeah. Arabic? Is, is it the other way around? Huh? Yeah. So that that is what canonical format really means. Okay. Then the most important, uh, and that does not mean that the other parts are not important, but one of the most important fields in... Um, in the VLAN tag is the VLAN, is the VLAN what? ID. So when I talk of VLAN 2, VLAN 3, VLAN 4, then that number 2, 3, 4 is what is placed at this particular point, the VLAN ID. The VLAN ID is 12 bits. 12 bits means how many VLANs can we be able to have? In total, how many VLANs can we be able to have if there are 12 bits? 2 raised to power, 2 raised to power, 12, right? Which gives us 1496, 1496. So generally, you can be able to have, they begin from 1. So you can be able to have, uh, you can be able to have from villain 1 to villain 40, is it 95? 95 or 96? 96, eh? <laughs> because we are not starting from zero, eh? Okay. So as you're going to learn, the default, the default VLAN ID is VLAN 1. So that's why when I've been talking about VLAN 2, VLAN 3, I've not been talking about VLAN 1. Because by default, all the interfaces belong to VLAN 1. Okay, please note, uh, note that when we talk, when we talk of, um, when we talk of a tagged frame, access devices or end devices like PCs, your phone, the server, they do not, they do not understand tags. They only deal with untagged frames. Are you together? So it is your switch, the interface of your switch, that will either add a tag or remove the tag. Is that clear? Yeah, so it's, it's the work of your switch to add or remove a tag. But your end device does not deal with tagged frames. So your PC will send untagged frame. Then your, your switch will stamp it with VLAN 10. Are you getting the point? Then send it out to all the VLAN tens. When receiving a tagged frame with VLAN 10, it first of all removes the tag, then sends it down to your PC. Is that clear? Yeah. So end devices do not deal with tagged frames. They only deal with untagged frames. So don't forget that. OK. So, how then do we do VLAN implementation? Now, as you might already have guessed, the link that interconnects, the link that interconnects switches mm, can be able to carry both tagged frames and untagged frames. So the link between switch 1 and switch 2 carries data of multiple VLANs. In this situation, a VLAN-based data tagging method is required to distinguish the frames of different VLANs. 
So IEEE, as we said, uses 802.1Q. And normally, this standard is in short and regularly referred to as dot one q so when you talk of dot one q we are talking of the villain header which defines a system of villain tagging for ethernet frames by inserting the 802.1q tag into the frame header in order to be able to identify so the original question we had asked how does switch 2 know that it's supposed to forward to pc4 which is also in villain term mm -hmm. so i just again want to reiterate this that your PC does not deal with tagged frames. It only deals with untagged frames. So when we say that your PC is in VLAN 10, we simply means that we've configured this interface that is connected to PC 1 to stamp every frame it receives from PC 1 with VLAN 10. Is that clear? Yeah. When when your switch receives when your switch receives a frame that is destined for VLAN 10, it removes that tag before sending it to your PC. So your PC does not deal with tagged frames. It only deals with untagged frames. Okay. So we have several ways in which we can be able to uh, assign VLANs. Uh, actually, they are uh, five. We have interface-based assignment where we assign VLANs depending on the interface. So we assign particular interfaces on certain VLANs. So for example, we say that interface G001 and G003 are on VLAN 10. Uh, G002 and G004 are on VLAN 20. Are we together? So when we do that, we simply mean that where is G001 and 3? We simply mean that here, sorry, we simply mean that PC1 and PC3 are on VLAN what? While PC2 and PC4 are on VLAN 20. Are you getting the point? So that is what we call interface based assignments. This is the most this is the most commonly used VLAN assignment method, interface-based, interface-based. It's the most commonly used. Um, so normally, on that particular interface, on that particular interface here, on this one, we configure what we call a PVID. A PVID, PVID. PVID is port VLAN identifier PVID port VLAN identifier so we configure on that particular interface for example it will have a G001 it will have a PVID of 10 meaning that it will tag frames it receives with a VLAN 10 You're getting the point yeah the VLAN ID of that tag is going to be 10 so that's what we call a PVID port VLAN ID Okay, uh, so we're going to look into each each and every one of this method. Okay, so the other method uh, that is used is MAC address based assignments. So in this case, we assign VLANs based on the MAC address. So we say that if you have this MAC address, MAC1 and MAC3, you belong to VLAN 10. So you see here, we have PC1 with Mac 1. We have PC3 with Mac 3. So they're going to belong to VLAN 10. Otherwise, if you have Mac address 2 and Mac address 4, then you are on VLAN 20. So PC2 here and PC4 are going to be on VLAN 20. Please remember that these configurations are not done on the end devices but on the on the switch interface. Are we together? Yeah, we are going to see that on the lab. Okay, other methods quickly. You can also assign VLANs based on the IP address. So you can give, for example, the network address. Mm -hmm. For example, in this university, I think 
this is the method that has been used, IP-based assignments. So that you say that this is the student subnet. Students can be able to access our network through 192.168.1. Star, star meaning all that range. Are we together? Yeah. And therefore, anyone that is on this IP subnet belongs to VLAN 2. And maybe you say staff are on VLAN 3. They can be able to access on this subnet, 192.168.3.star. So that's what we call IP subnet best. Then we have protocol best. If you are accessing through IPv4, then you're on VLAN 10. If you're accessing via IPv6, then you're on VLAN 20. Then you have policy based. Anytime you see policy based, it means we are using a combination of the preceding methods. So you can use a combination. For example, you use IP subnet and also interface. You can use two, you can use three, etc., etc. So let's have a look at each one of them so that we can understand their individual characteristics. Okay. So here, the principles is that you configure, you configure the VLAN on the particular interface. So the network administrator pre-configures a port VLAN ID uh, for each switch interface and assign each interface to a VLAN corresponding to the PVID. Uh, so for example, you configure this particular interface to have a PVID of 10. So you see PVID of 10. So it will receive untagged frame from the PC, from PC1, untagged frame. Then it's going to tag that frame by inserting a dot one Q header between the, was it the source MAC address and the type field of the Ethernet header? Yeah, so it's going to insert a dot one Q header there and the VLAN ID of that particular header is going to have the value 10. Are we together? So you're going to explore this when you do the lab after this topic uh, uh, by doing a data capture using Wireshark. Okay, so the VLAN, look here, VLAN needs to be, it needs to be reconfigured if the PC moves. Because if you, that's the main disadvantage of port-based port -based configuration. If you move this PC from this port to another port, it, it means you have to configure that port 2 to be on VLAN 10. Are you together? Yeah. So that's one of the main disadvantages of uh, this particular configuration method. Okay. Uh, uh, the port VLAN ID can be, the port VLAN ID, PVID, eh? it can range between the values 1 to 40, 94. 40, 94. So, normally you can configure between 2 to 40, 94 because VLAN 1 is the default VLAN ID, PVID for all the interfaces. Are we together? Yeah, again, when you do the lab, you're going to see that all the interfaces will be on VLAN 1, unless now you add it to a different VLAN. Okay. So the other common one is MAC address best VLAN assignments. So this one, we use it when, uh, we use this one when we want to especially uh, improve the security of the network. So as we said, here VLANs are assigned based on the source MAC address of the frame, based on the source MAC address. So a network administrator pre-configures the mapping between the MAC address and the VLAN ID. So after receiving untagged frame, so you, the PC will receive untagged frame then what will it do? It will check the source MAC address. Look here. Check the source MAC address of the frame. 
then the frame now will be tagged based on the source MAC address. So it will check, hey, the MAC address of this frame, the source MAC address is MAC1. Then it will check on its table. Uh, if it's MAC1, then stamp it with VLAN ID of 10. If it's MAC2, stamp it with VLAN ID of 10. Uh, so that's how then we add PC1 and PC2 to VLAN. So normally with this kind of configuration, if you move, if you move this from that port to another port, if you move that, what happens? Do you need to reconfigure? Do you think you need to reconfigure if the PC moves? Hmm? You know, you don't need to reconfigure, right? Because this table remains. This table remains. So whichever port you're connected to, we'll just check the source MAC address of your frame, then tag you with VLAN ID of 10. So when you move, it doesn't. But now, uh, this method provides, provides a higher level of security. Provides a higher level of security because only allowed PCs can be able to access network resources. Are you seeing that? Are you seeing that? If you come with your PC and the MAC address, your PC's MAC address is not here, we are simply going to discard. You're not going to access the network. You're not going to access the network. So that's the main advantage of uh, MAC address best villain assignment. Those two, security, and if you move a device from one port to another port, you don't need to re reconfigure. So those are the advantages of this assignment method. Okay, now, when we talk of VLANs, we talk of, uh, uh, okay, uh, I think I need to mention something here. As well as we've said that the advantage is that security, but again, the disadvantage is also the same, that it is prone to security risk. How? How? If someone fakes your, if someone fakes your what? MAC address. So if they send out a frame and on the source MAC address, they, they put your MAC address. If they've already learned your MAC address, then they can, they can be able to, to, to access the network and pretend to be you. That's called MAC spoofing. Uh, so please read about that. Okay, so that's the main disadvantage of, again, this one, MAC address-based villain assignment. Okay, so when we are talking of uh, villains, we are going to be talking of these three interface types. The first one called an, an access interface. The second one, please read it loud. And lastly, we have hybrid interface. You can think of hybrid as being able to do what both of them can do, eh? Are we together? Now, normally, we configure interfaces that are connecting to the end devices. We configure those interfaces as access interfaces, these ones. Access, access, access. So these interfaces are used to connect PCs or servers. In general, the NICs on such terminals receive and send only where are we con they receive and send only what? And tag frames. So these devices they don't they don't understand tagged frames. The only process that is send and receive and tagged frames. So an access interface can be added. Please, please remember this. An access interface can only be added to. Can only be added to what? To one villain. Can only be able to add it to one villain. So th this interface ca cannot be on villain two and villain three at the same time. It can only be on villain two or VLAN 3. 
but not both of them at the same time. Then we have the trunk. Trunk allows frames that belong, look, frames that belong to multiple villains to pass through and differentiate the frames using the 802.1Q tag. This type of interface is used to connect a switch to another switch or a sub-interface on a device, such as a router or a firewall. So, anytime we are interconnecting switches together, like what we're doing here, then these interfaces, we have to configure them as we have to configure them as what? Trunk interfaces. Trunk interfaces. So, look, these particular interface or these particular lines, they don't carry any tagged frames. But these ones, they carry tagged frames from multiple villains. From multiple villains. So we are going to see how that operates in a short while. Then the last one is what we call the hybrid interface. So it is similar to a trunk interface. So it also allows frames that belong to multiple villains to pass through and differentiates them using the dot one q tag. So you can determine whether to allow a hybrid interface to carry villain tags when sending the frames of one or more villains. So let's talk about hybrid more. In the in the subsequent in the subsequent uh, uh, slides, but please remember that hybrid interfaces no that interfaces on Huawei devices are by default hybrid interfaces. Are you together? So unless you configure them to an access interface or a trunk interface, the operators hybrid interfaces by default. Yes, please. Uh -huh. Yes, very true. So, uh, layer 3, like here from this diagram, we are configuring this. We are configuring this interface as an access interface because we don't want this router to be able to receive tagged frames. Are you together? Yeah, but in the next chapter, we're going to learn about intervillain communication. So we will see what happens then if we want PC, this PC on VLAN 10, to be able to communicate to this PC on VLAN 20. So if that happens, we have to be able to send this to the router. Then the router will route it back like that. So we are, we are going to understand how, and in that particular case, we might need to configure this particular interface as a trunk. Okay. So let's try and understand how an access interface works. So here we are inside the switch. So this interface G001 will receive a what? Will receive an tagged frame, right? We've configured it with a PVID of 10. Therefore, what is it going to do after receiving this untagged frame? It's going to stamp it with a villain ID of 10. So that's how that happens. Okay, let's look. What happens when it receives a tagged frame? What happens when it receives a tagged frame? So when this particular guy receives a tagged frame, it checks, do I have this? Uh, uh, does my villain ID, does my PVID match, match that particular tag ID? If it matches, it can now forward it, it can forward it out as either a tagged frame or 
untagged frame. Oh, no, no, no. Let me let me just repeat that again. So if the VLAN ID of the frame is the same as the PVID of the interface, the interface permits the frame. So after receiving it, you receive, you check, does, does my PVID match with that one? Otherwise, if the VLAN ID of the frame is different from the PVID of the interface, then what does the interface do? It discards the frame. So we we discard. We don't forward it. We discard. If they are different, we discard. Okay. So that's how an access uh, does it. Okay. Then let's look at frame sending. Frame sending. So inside the switch, if the switch receives a tagged frame, what does it do? It checks. Does this VLAN ID match my PVID? If it matches my PVID, then I'll be able to send it out. But before I send it out, what do I do? I remove the VLAN tag so that I send it out as a as an untagged frame like that. So that's what we do. Otherwise, otherwise, if I receive a frame with a VLAN ID of 20, I compare it with my PVID, mine is 10. So what do I do? I discard. I discard. I discard. So that is how an access interface processes frames when receiving and when sending. So let's look at the next one, which is the trunk. So the trunk. Uh, uh, on the trunk, remember we said the trunk will allow uh, frames from multiple villains to pass through it. You remember that? We said it can allow frames from multiple interfaces to pass through it. So when you're configuring a trunk interface, you have to configure two things. When you're configuring a trunk, you have to configure two things. The first thing you have to do is to configure the PV, the PVID of that interface, if need be. The other thing you need to configure is the list. List of villain. List of villain IDs permitted by the interface. List of PVIDs permitted by the interface. Okay. So I hope you, you remember that. So let's look at how do we process when we receive a frame uh, and we are a trunk interface. Please don't don't forget that we are a trunk interface. So here we've configured this trunk interface with a PVID of 10. Are you together? And we have also permitted this interface to carry to carry VLAN 10 frames. Are you seeing that? So that is what we've said. You have to configure the PVID and you configure the permitted interfaces. So, so. so that's what we are having here. Permitted VLAN ID 10. So G001, what happens? G001 receives untagged frame. The PVID configured there is 10. So it will simply do what? Tag it. It will tag it. Okay. So let's see again. After receiving a tagged frame. Remember here we were receiving an tagged frame. Untagged frame. So let's see. If we receive a tagged frame, what do we do? Ah, yeah. So let's look here. What is our PVID? What is our PVID? One, right? Does it match the VLAN ID of this frame? It doesn't match, right? But look at this list, the list of permitted VLANs. We have VLAN 10. Does it match the VLAN ID of our frame? Yes, it does. So what do we do? We send it out as a as a tagged frame. Are we together? 
Yeah, we just send it out as a tagged frame. Ah, yeah. So let's see frame sending. How does the trunk interface process it? We receive, we receive frame sending. We receive a tagged frame. So we check, we check. Do we does this match the list of permitted? Number two, does this match our PVID? If it matches our PVID, which in this case it matches, then we remove the tag. We remove the tag and send it out as untagged frame. Is that clear? Yeah? If the VLAN ID matches our PVID, we send it out as a untagged frame. We remove. On the other hand, on the other hand, if we receive a tagged frame and it does not meet it does not match our PVID, but it is on our list of permitted VLAN IDs, then we simply send it out as a tagged frame. Can I give you a minute to think about that? Or has it sunk? Okay, so in order to understand that better, let's look at this example. Let's look at this example of how frames are processed on access and trunk interfaces. So let's have a look at this. I think it's animated. Okay, so look there. PC1 and PC2, they're on different villains. Can you see that? Villain 10 and villain 20, respectively. So they'll send out untagged frame, right? Maybe PC1 wants to communicate to PC3. As we have said, uh, interfaces connecting the end devices are going to be configured as access interfaces. Interfaces interconnecting switches like switch 1 and switch 2, they are going to be configured as trunk interfaces. Now, look, the trunk interface on switch 1 and switch 2 list of permitted villains so they can permit villain 1 villain 10 and villain 20 right but the trunk interfaces have been configured oh no 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 this is just villain id okay so let's move on so it's going to be sent to the switch this interface is going to add a tag 20 for example then it's going to come here we have the list permitted, so we're going to send it out as a tagged frame. Are you seeing that? Let me just do it again. So here, we are sending this untagged frame here. What will this port do? It will tag it with VLAN ID of 20. Then it will be sent to this interface here. This interface will look on its list. Do I have, have I been permitted to forward this? Yes. So if it finds it there, then it's going to send it out as a tagged frame with the, with, the, with the tag. Then switch 2 is going to receive it. So let's see what happens when switch 2 receives it. Oh, okay. When switch 2 receives it, it's going to have the tag, right? So it's going to send it out through ports that only have a PVID of 20. And before sending out, what is it going to do? It's going to remove the tag so that it sends it out as a untagged frame. Are we together? Yeah, so that's what happens. Okay. Okay, so yes. Please.
Okay, Sama. So let me let me just do 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 this. Eh? Um, for now, for now, look here. What is the PVID of this trunk interface? So w what she's asking is, if a trunk port receives a tagged frame, what really happens? So that's that's what I want to explain again. Eh? So the PVID for this trunk interface is one, eh? which is the default PVID. So we've not we have not configured a, a, a villain ID there. So what happens is this: when this guy receives a tagged frame, it checks number one: does it match my PVID? If it matches its own PVID, then it will remove that tag and forward it out as an tagged frame. It will remove the tag, the trunk. It will remove the tag. Then send it out as untagged. Eh? But if the PVID does not match, then it goes where? It goes to this table. Am I allowed to allow or to permit this VLAN uh, uh, frames to pass through? If it finds that, hey, I'm allowed to allow VLAN 20 to pass through, and the VLAN ID of this frame is 20, then it's just going to forward it out as a tagged frame without removing the tag. So it's not going to remove it. It's going to send it out as a tagged frame. Are we together? And I hope you understand why we are sending it out as a tagged frame. So that when we send it to switch 2, then switch 2 will know to which VLAN that frame is supposed to be sent to. Are you getting the point? Is that clear? And that's why we said that we only configure interfaces that are interconnecting switches as trunk. So we, we can't configure uh, an interface that is connecting to an end device as a trunk. Because if we, if we do that, we send a tagged frame to an end device. The end device does not understand the tagged frame. Is that clear? Yeah, so that's why the trunk port permits, that's why the trunk port permits uh, 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 VLAN uh, frames from multiple VLANs or tagged frames from multiple VLANs. So thank you for that question. Okay, so let's look at hybrid. Uh, this one at first can be a little bit confusing, so you need to be a little bit attentive so that you can be able to understand how the hybrid port operates. Okay, so after receiving, hybrid is interesting, and from the example, maybe we can be able to understand uh, uh, its application scenario. Okay, so before... So with hybrid interfaces, interfaces, you have to configure the following. So the PVID, you have to configure the PVID. Then number two, um, untagged, permitted. Let me just write it. Permitted, untagged, VLAN, VLAN ID. Number three, permitted, tagged, VLAN, IDs, actually it's IDs, because it can be, it can be uh, multiple. So with this in our mind, can we then be able, with that in our mind, can we then be able to uh, to to explain this, how it processes. So on frame receiving, when it receives, eh? so when it receives an untagged frame, so this one has a PVID of 10, right? So permitted VLAN ID, it has also been permitted to to send out frames from VLAN 10. So it will simply mark or tag that particular frame with a VLAN ID of 10. Are we together? 
Sawa sawa. So inside the switch, remember this is an interface we are talking about. It receives untagged frame. The PVID configured is 10, so it's simply going to tag it. Just like the access interface. Are you seeing that? Uh, just like the access interface. Okay, let's look at the next one. After receiving a tagged frame, what does it do? What does it do? So if the villain of the ID, or if the villain ID of the frame is in the list of villain IDs permitted by the interface, then the interface permits the frame. Otherwise, the interface will discard the frame. So what does that mean? Here, we have received a, a tagged frame with a villain ID of 10. What do I do? I check. Does 10 belong to my permitted villain IDs? If yes, then I send it out as a, as a tagged frame. Are you getting the point? If it's not in my permitted list, I simply discard it. Simply discard it. Don't send it out. So are you seeing that unlike... Uh, so you can see that now here, it's, it's almost behaving like what? Are you seeing it's behaving like a trunk pot? Eh? Our PVID does not match, but you're on my list of permitted, therefore I'll... I'll send you out. Are you seeing that? Yeah. So it's behaving like a trunk pot. Behaving like a trunk pot. The first instance behaving like an access pot. Receives untagged, tags it with the PVID and sends it out. So here it's behaving like the trunk pot. Okay, so let's see what happens on receiving. So when we receive a ah, frame sending, uh, sorry. How do we send? How do we send it out now? So here, we, on the first instance, we've received a tagged frame. Eh? We've received a tagged frame. So we check the PVID. Does it match my PVID? Yes. If it matches my PVID, then I send it out as an tagged frame. Are you together? And of course, you still have to be on my permitted list of villain IDs. Otherwise, otherwise if my PVID... I receive you, I receive you, look at my PVID, does not match, right? It does not match. But I look at my permitted list, you are there. So what do I do? I send you out as a, as a trunk, right? Send you. Ah, as a tag, eh? as a tag frame. So really, you can see, you can see that here, we are behaving like an access port, right? Here, here we are behaving like a trunk, right? Here we are behaving like a what? Sorry. Here we are behaving like an. Senior, the access port way in a behavior. You can receive tag frame na match PVID. See, natoa your tag na inayituma to the end device. Yeah. And lastly, here we are behaving like what? Huh? Like a trunk pot, right? The trunk, it receives a tagged frame, does not match my PVID, but is on my list. I send it out as a tagged frame, right? So that's why it's called a hybrid interface. Hybrid interface. So this is the default. Uh, 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 this is the default, uh, uh, the default interface type for Huawei devices. Okay, so maybe we can look at this example. And uh, on this example, let's also try and understand why, why, then we need. Why do we need? Why do we need hybrid interfaces? Interfaces that can behave both like access or trunk interfaces. Now look here. This is a server, right? The server is on VLAN 100, right? Now, PCs from the accounting department are on VLAN 10. PCs from the finance department, for example, are on VLAN 20. But we want both of them to be able to access server, server 1. Are you getting the point? So how do we make that possible? 
how do we make that possible? Answer, by using just access and trunk interfaces, we cannot be able to do it. We can only be able to do it using hybrid interfaces. Hybrid interfaces. Okay, so let's try and understand how we've configured switch 1 and switch 2. Eh? So, on switch 1, on switch 1, we've configured, we've configured interface 1 here with a PVID of 10. Are you seeing that? And we have also allowed that interface to carry or to permit frames from VLAN 1, VLAN 10, and VLAN 100. Similarly, interface 2 on switch 1, this one here, we've configured it with a PVID of 20, so that PC2 can be on VLAN 20. And we have allowed, we have allowed it to carry. Uh -huh. Then, how have we configured this? This interface, interface 3. So the PVID is the default PVID, PVID of 1, but we've told it to carry, to allow pass VLAN 1, 10, and 100. Please, I, I think this is supposed to be uh, uh, interface 3 there. I think one of them here is supposed to be 20. It's supposed to be 10, 20, and 100. Are we together? Yeah, just like here. They're just the same. So this one should also be, be the same as this one. It's supposed to be 10, 20, and 100. So I think there was a typo there. Okay. So that is that. Then this one on switch 2. It has the PVID of 100, so that the server can be on VLAN 100, right? Then we have allowed it to carry frames that are tagged with VLAN 1, 10, 20, and 100. Are we together? So have we understood how we've configured? Okay, so now let's look at how it's going to carry the packets or the frames. Okay. I wish they could have used this animation on just one PC and then the next PC, rather than both of them at the same time. But anyway, uh, let me let me let me just explain it without using the animation. Uh, okay, so look here. PC one wants to send a frame to the server. So how will these switches behave? Now look here. We send untagged frame, right? This guy has a PVAD of 10. So it's going to tag it with VLAN 10. Are you together? Okay. Then this guy receives it. It's also hybrid. So th when this guy receives it and it's tagged, it looks on its list of permitted. Permitted what? See it's interface 3. It looks on this list. Then sees that I have 10. Permitted list. And I'm supposed to send it out as a tagged frame. Eh? So that's why it is sending it out as a tagged frame with the villain ID of 10. Then switch 2 will receive it. Uh, when switch 2 receives it, uh, it looks at the destination uh, address and sees that it's for this server. Then sends it out to this interface. This interface, how is it going to process it? It will check interface 1 on switch 2, this one. It will check on the list. Am I allowed to pass, am I allowed to forward frames from VLAN 10? Yes, but as untagged frames. So it's going to remove the tag and send it to the server as an tagged frame. Are we together? Is that clear to everyone? Good. So that's how, that's how hybrid, that's how hybrid ports allow communication of devices that are on different different villains okay oh so I, I'm not gonna go through the summary please have time and go through it so let's look at the villain applications uh, I want you to do the lab 
we are going to go for a short break and then you can you can do the lab okay so uh vlan assignment rules uh so you can do it by service that is for example uh, we have different types of data that uh can 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 go through your your network for example voice or video or just data when we talk of data we are just talking of uh, uh internet data internet data so those are the types that you can have so uh you you, you get that uh, one way in which you can create vlans is based on that so you create a vlan for voice you create a vlan for data and you also create a vlan for video are you getting the point so i can tell you for example in this institution we have a voice we have a voice vlan that is used to support our ip phones our ip phones right reason as to why we create a voice vlan is so that we can give this data packets higher priority you remember on the villain tag we had a priority field eh? that I told you ranges from 0 to 7. The higher the value, the higher the priority. Eh? So we create a voice villain so that we give it a higher priority because this is real-time data. And we, we don't want people who are calling each other to be able to miss some information because we have congestion on the network. So normally why we configure higher priorities so that in case we have congestion, then we have different queuing mechanisms. If you do HCIP, you're going to learn about them. We, we have different queuing mechanisms and the higher priority uh, uh, frames are going to be placed on the faster uh, or on the top of the queue, if I, you can allow me to use that. So that's one way. Otherwise, you can also create VLANs based on departments. Are we together? Students, finance, marketing, etc., etc. Okay, then you can also create by application, by application, like VLANs for servers, VLANs for offices, VLANs for classrooms, etc., etc. So the tip: VLAN IDs can be randomly assigned within the supported range. We know the range is 2 to 4094. To improve VLAN ID continuity, you can associate VLAN IDs with subnets during VLAN assignment. So that is exactly how it has been done here. That is exactly how it has been done here. So of course you can use any VLAN ID within, within that range, but it's advisable that for continuity, you, you use continuous uh, VLAN, VLAN numbers so that it can be easier for you to, to manage and monitor. So let's look at this. Assume, so this is an example of VLAN planning. Assume that there are three buildings. So we have the admin building uh, with offices, classroom, and finance section. Um, administration building with offices, classroom, and financing sections. Then we have a teaching building. Sorry, I think I'm reading this in the wrong way. Mm -hmm. uh, administrative building with offices. So it has these offices. Then we have teaching building with offices and classrooms. Offices and classrooms. Then we have office building with offices and finance section. Mm. Each building has one access switch and the core switch is deployed in the in the what? Admin building. So the following will describe the VLAN the VLAN plan. Okay, so we we are saying for example VLAN one. Uh so you can see that we are associating it with a particular subnet. So uh, these will be for the office users. Then VLAN 2, uh, they'll be on this subnet. Uh, and uh, these will be the finance department. Then VLAN 3 will be on this subnet. And these will be the classroom users. VLAN 100 
will be on this subnet and this is the device management function device management function means uh, that these are the devices that you're using to monitor and configure the network so you're creating a VLAN for those devices that you're going to be using to monitor and configure the network So that is what you call device management. Um, uh, that particular machine that you'll be using is called uh, an NMS, Network Management System, an NMS. So you use that, it can be a PC, it can be a laptop, that machine you're using is called a Network Management System. Okay, so for security purposes, you also create a VLAN for that. Okay, so interface based VLAN assignment, we have a scenario here. Uh, so let's let's read this. There are multiple enterprise building. These enterprises share network resources to reduce cost. Networks of the enterprise connect to different interfaces of the same layer to switch. Same layer to switch. So access the internet through the same egress device. Yes? Teacher, it seems like you are not recording today. Oh, actually, I'm recording using a, a different application. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm recording using a different application, but thank you. Thank you for that. It's called OBS. Okay. Because yeah. I, I didn't get I didn't get the, the, the right to, to be the host, and I can't be able to reach Michael. Thank you. Uh, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, so we want to see the VLAN. Uh, we want to see the the VLAN assignment here. So in order to isolate services of different enterprises and ensure service security, we assign interfaces connected to the enterprise networks to different VLANs. So in this way, each enterprise has an independent network and each VLAN works as a virtual group. Okay, so what, what they're saying here really is um, uh, you can think of this as departments, Enterprise 1, Enterprise 2, and Enterprise 3, and therefore you can be able, if this for example are switches or something, again layer 2 switches, you can be able to configure these interfaces uh, uh, with PVID of three or uh, four for that one, this one three, and this one maybe the PVAD of two, so that you can separate them. So that you can separate them. So this is a layer two switch. That's how you'll be able to do that layer three switch, then the router that connects you to the internet at the core layer. Okay, so for MAC address based, so that one was port based, eh? we are using ports. For MAC address based assignments, um, we have to configure the MAC address based assignment on switch one to prevent any new PC connected to the network from accessing network resources. So to do that, as we're going to do in the lab, we are going to configure the MAC address of each of this device, each of this device on the switch. So that in case any new device comes in with a different MAC address, they won't be able to access the network. So the scenario here is the network administrator of the enterprise assigns PCs in the same department to the same villain. To improve information security, enterprise requires that only employees, only employees in the specified department be allowed to access specific network resources. So in such kind of a scenario, then we use the MAC address based VLAN assignment method. As we wind up the VLAN configuration example, so normally we configure VLANs by using, uh, let me just 
do this UOE. So for example, we're having that. So we use the command villain, then the villain ID. So for example, villain2. So that's one of them. Otherwise, we can, for example, use the command villain2, Four, six. For example, I want to create VLAN two, three, four, five, six. Oh, no, 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 no. Here I have to use the command batch. So if I just want to create one VLAN, then VLAN two. Enter. If I want to create multiple VLANs, I have to use the VLAN batch command. VLAN batch. Then like that. Otherwise, I can, for example, do. Um, you have to be on System View to create VLANs. So I can do villain batch um, 2 to 5 and 10. So these will create, this command will create villain 2, villain 3, villain 4, villain 5, and villain 10. Is that clear? Is that clear? So that's the command for creating VLANs. After creating VLANs, mm, after creating the VLAN, the next thing you need to do is to configure access and trunk interfaces and add them to particular VLANs. So how you configure, on interface view, you go to, for example, G001, then you use the command port link type. Then you configure it, for example, as an access port. So that's how you're able to do that. This value, this parameter here can be access, it can be trunk, it can be hybrid. Okay, and then after that, you configure the default VLAN for the access interface. How you do that, that is, this is how you configure PVID, eh? How you configure PVID for uh, a port. So the command is port default VLAN, then you give it a VLAN ID, okay? Are we together? The VLAN ID can be a value ranging from 1 to 1494. To 1494. Then trunk interface. So port link type trunk. Then for trunk interfaces, we need to allow it to carry uh, frames from different VLANs. The command to allow them is this one, port trunk allow pass VLAN, then the VLAN ID or the range, or all. So let me, let me just show you that. So for example, you are on switch one. Um, you are on switch one. So you have to be on uh, gigabit, for example, Ethernet. Let me not type that as full. So for example, you're on 001. So the command to allow VLANs to pass through is this one. Port trunk allow pass VLAN. Then the ID, we want to allow two. You can do space, and then maybe you want to allow three. You want to allow four, like that, then enter. Otherwise, you can do two to four. So it will allow VLAN two, VLAN three, and VLAN four. Or two to four, space, ten. It will allow two, three, four, and ten. Alternatively, you can do allow You can do allow all, eh? Yeah. But are you seeing a security risk by allowing all? Is that a security risk to your network? Of course it is. Okay. Uh, how you how you assign a PVID for a trunk interface is this port trunk PVID. VLAN, then you give it, for example, 10. Are we together? Yeah, that's how you configure that. So you're going to do this on the lab in just a few minutes. Okay, and then for the hybrid, you begin by using port link type hybrid, then port 
hybrid and tagged VLAN, then the VLAN uh, range. So this will allow untagged, the list of untagged VLANs. Otherwise, you can also do port hybrid tagged VLAN to provide a list of all the tagged VLAN IDs. Then the last one here is if you want to configure PVID for that particular port, then you use port hybrid PVID VLAN, then you give it the VLAN ID. So that's how we configure a hybrid interface. Okay. Where were we? Okay. So let's just try and move a little bit faster. Okay, so we have a case that we want to look at, configuring interface-based VLAN assignments. So what, is, what are the requirements? On the network shown on the, on the figure, switch one and two of an enterprise are connected to multiple PCs. So and PCs with the same service access the network using different devices. To ensure communication security, Enterprise requires that only PCs with the same service can directly communicate. So to meet this requirement, configure interface-based VLAN assignment on the switches and add interfaces connected to PCs with the same service to the same VLAN. So in this way, PCs in different VLANs cannot directly communicate at layer 2, but PCs in the same VLAN can directly communicate. Okay, so... Uh, as you see, we have switch 1 and switch 2. We want PC1 to be able to communicate to PC3 because they are both on VLAN 10. PC2 to be able to communicate on PC4 to PC4 because they are on VLAN 20. So they are connected to these interfaces. These are the PVIDs. So how do we configure? Of course, this one is red because you are going to configure it as a, as a trunk. PVID 1 the default, so we really don't have to configure that. G003. So let's do that configuration. It's quite easy. So uh, the configuration uh, the configuration outline is you start by creating the villains. So we only need villain 10 and villain 20. So you create villain 10, then villain 20, one by one, on switch one. On switch 2, you can use the VLAN batch command. So VLAN batch 10 space 20, like that. Then we can configure the access and trunk interfaces. So we begin by this interface here, G001. So you go into the interface, then use the command port link type access, then you you configure the PVID using the command port default VLAN 10, like that. Uh, so you'll do the same for G002. For G003, uh, which is going to be the trunk, G003, so port link type, trunk. Port trunk PVID VLAN 1. You don't have to do that. Then port trunk allow pass. We want it to allow VLAN 20 and VLAN 10 frames to be carried through that trunk. So how to verify the configuration? You use a command called display VLAN. Display VLAN. So it's going to show you the number of VLANs that are there and the interfaces that have been added. So this one, VLAN 10, VLAN 20. It will also tell you whether uh, that interface is going to carry TG for tagged or UT for untagged frames. So you can see, for example, uh, uh, G003 can carry uh, untagged uh, 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 if, it's or, uh, if, it's, if it's a VLAN 1 frame. Eh? Uh, you can see that G001 is going to carry untagged if it's a VLAN 10 frame. G003 is going to carry it as a tagged frame if it's a VLAN 10 frame. Uh, G002 is going to carry untagged uh, frames if it's a VLAN 20. Otherwise, 
G003, it comes as VLAN 20, just forwards it out as a tagged frame. So that's how that is going to work. Okay, configuring interface best VLAN assignments. Uh, so for this one, uh, this is case number two. Uh, and this time we are going to use uh, hybrid. We're going to use hybrid. So f for this case number two, I'll let you discuss it just before you do the lab. Eh? So I want you to discuss that case number two there of using hybrid. Okay, so uh, huh, verifying. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you is on basic VLAN configuration commands. Uh, when it comes to using MAC address assignment, MAC address assignment. Eh? So when you use MAC address assignment, the command is uh, you have to be on the VLAN view. You go, for example, on VLAN 10, then you use the command MAC VLAN MAC address, then you give it the MAC address. So that's how you do it. That's how you do it. And then after that, you have to enable that particular interface to use MAC VLAN, to use MAC address uh, 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 assignment, VLAN assignment. So the command to do that is mark hyphen VLAN enable. So I wanna, I want you to, you're going to do that in the lab. So this is a configuration example. We just want to ensure that we configure this switch so that it can be able to accept only PC1, PC2, and PC3. Okay. Just a moment, excuse me for that. Uh -huh. Okay. So how to do that? We create VLAN 10. We create VLAN 10. Then we use the command MAC address. MAC VLAN MAC address. Let me see if I can zoom this so that you can see it better. So we use this command. Then we give it the MAC address like that. The MAC address of PC1, the MAC address of PC2, and the MAC address of PC3. So we have to configure them individually. Remember, you have to be on the VLAN view. So you have to go into that VLAN uh, before you start configuring. Uh, before you start configuring them, okay? Otherwise, other than that, uh, the other most important bit is uh, for the interfaces that are connecting to the end devices, you configure them as hybrid using that command. Then you give them the PVID. So you do the same on the other interfaces. Then other than that, you have to enable on those interfaces, you enable MAC address based VLAN assignment using the command MAC VLAN enable. MAC VLAN enable. So that's how you do that. Okay. So you can do display VLAN uh, to view the details. Then in the lab, you're also going to explore this. You're going to explore this command display mac vlan mac address all that is going to give you a table with all the mac addresses and the vlans they they belong to when you've used mac address based vlan assignment method okay so ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for your time and participation asante nisana so now we can do the lab i'm sharing the link of the video for the lab but I'm just you, giving you that so that in case you have a problem, you can be able to confirm. But I want you to follow the lab guide in doing the lab.